questions. But we are not that way. We want you to question what we teach. We want you to compare what we teach with the Bible, with God's Word. This is what does the Bible say. Also following this program tonight and every Thursday night, a word from the Lord with James Ophiel. Now I believe tonight James will be joining me on this program a little later on and uh, we'll go through to 10 o'clock and we'll open up the phone lines uh, after James comes on and uh, after I get through the, the major, most part of my lesson tonight. And we will allow you to call in and, and question and comment about the, the things that we're going to be discussing. Also, tonight and every Thursday night at 10 p.m., what does the Bible say? Another episode with, uh, I believe, Caleb or either Johnny will be hosting this. Um, it airs on WIG TV out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, W-H-I-G, at, at uh, 10 o'clock. So if you're watching online, just uh, type in wig tv and you should be able to pick them up at 10 o'clock so you have what does the bible say at eight word from the lord at nine another episode of what does the bible say at 10. also you can assemble with us in martinsville the brethren meet at 823 uh, starling avenue 823 starling avenue they meet on wednesday nights at 7 p.m for bible study sundays at 9 10 and 11 a.m you can reach Johnny Robertson at 276-806-2150. Eugene Edwards can be reached at 276-806-6922. Now, how many, again, how many uh, churches do you know of that will give out their cell phone numbers? And this is a member of the, the Lord's Church in Martinsville. Eugene is a willing member in Martinsville, willing to come out and have a Bible study with you. Anything it takes to get you to a better knowledge of the truth, we are at your service. We are the Lord's servants, as he instructed in Matthew, uh, uh, John 13, I believe it is. But anyway, we want to do that very thing. We want to, to bring you to a better knowledge of the, the truth of the Bible. The church in Eden meets at 250 the Boulevard. They meet on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for Bible study, Sundays at 9 and 10 10 p.m. Uh, a.m. I'm sorry, Sundays at 9 and 10 a.m. Uh, you can reach James Oldfield at 276-340-2653. And again, James will be here uh, on this program a little later on. I also want to remind everyone of the tent meeting that will be sponsored by the Eden Church of Christ. And here's a map. It will be uh, right off of Highway 14. If you're coming from Eden, it'll be I believe James uh, estimated 4.5 miles from the last stoplight on 14 in Eden. You go four and a half miles to the next stoplight and you would take a left on, uh, I believe that is Harrison Loop Road. And the tent will be set up three tenths of a mile off of that road. So very uh, accessible location, very good location. Convenient to Eden, convenient to Reesville, convenient to Damel, convenient to Martinsville. Uh, and this down here is 2.5 miles. If you're coming from Reesville, it will be 2.5 miles from the stoplight by Walmart. So that starts the 15th of September, which is Monday week, a Monday from this coming Monday. It will be the first night, 7 o'clock each night. And again, no collection will be passed. We don't take up any collection. We don't, have, we don't sell uh, DVDs or literature. We give it away. We, we want to give you God's Word. Uh, freely you have been given, freely, freely give. And that's what we want to do. We want to give you the gospel. And so I want you to come out and be with us. Bring your preacher, your pastor, your rabbi. Now, I, I, this is a uh, paper that's distributed in Danville. It's called the Piedmont Shopper. And I didn't have time to, to download it, but if you can see that, that's Jonathan Falwell there. And he took out a whole page ad to advertise Special Sunday. Jonathan Falwell will be joining us live at Dan River Church in Danville, Virginia. Now, why is it? That, and I know that ad had to cost probably four or five hundred dollars for a whole page ad. I, I actually spoke to the, the uh, Piedmont shopper and I was going to take out an ad to, uh, to challenge some of these preachers to come and defend some of the doctrines that they're teaching. And uh, so I know that ad is not cheap, but he'll take out a whole page ad to announce his coming to Danville 
like some great thing, but yet when we invite him to come to the tent meeting or to come in, uh, on this program, free airtime, free to defend some of the doctrines that he's teaching, then no, he won't do that. Now, Elmer Towns, the dean at Liberty University, has uh, agreed with Johnny Robinson at one point to debate him on this program, and then he didn't show up and canceled. The uh, debate captain at one time, Ergen Cantor from Liberty University, agreed to debate Johnny on this program, backed out. They have a whole debate team. We would allow the, the honor student of the debate team to come on this program and debate uh, the doctrines that they're teaching because you know why they won't come on? Because they can't be found in God's Word. The things that they're being taught, the Baptist Church for one, one thing, Thomas Road Baptist Church, Dan River Church, it's Baptist. They teach Baptist doctrine. It cannot be um, supported by God's Word. It's not in God's Word. So uh, someone needs to question Jonathan Falwell this Sunday about why he will not come on and answer us. And why is it that, you know, we come on week in and week out and point out the error of the doctrine that they're teaching? And I know you see it. I know a lot of people in the community see it. And, uh, but but they, they still, you know, follow false doctrine. I don't, I don't understand that. But anyway, tent meeting uh, the 15th, Monday week, and very accessible location between Eden and Reedsville. The Church of Christ in Danville meets at 120 American Legion Boulevard. That's one block behind the old Dutch shopping center off of North Main Street. <clears throat> we meet every Tuesday night for Bible study and Sundays at 10 and 11 a.m. And again, we, we welcome you. You can come in and set up a camera. You can have your recording equipment, whatever. We, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh, Paul said in Romans Chapter 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The power of God unto salvation today is the gospel, and so we want to give that to you freely, undefiled, not the doctrines of men, but the doctrine of Christ. And so we're not ashamed. You want to bring your camera in and record what we're preaching? That's fine. We would be glad for you to do it. We, we want you to have DVDs of this program, any program that we air. You are more than welcome to call in and, and request a free DVD and anything that will help you to come to a better knowledge of the truth because we want your soul saved in the end. Uh, Micah can be reached at 434-429-5221 uh, or you can email Micah at danvillecofc at gmail.com. Again, my name's Mark McMinnis. You can reach me at 434-770-8412. My email is mkmcminnis at gmail.com. I know you can't see that with the, the uh, lower third there, but it's been up there enough. And uh, if, if you want to contact me, here's my phone number. Anyway, you can get in touch with us. <clears throat> I also want to promote a radio program uh, put out by the Stony Creek Church of Christ in Elizabethan, Tennessee. That's where Micah and Drew Caleb and myself are attending school and they have a radio program uh, set up much like this one that you can call in and question and make comments about what they're teaching. Uh, they air every Tuesday and Thursday live at 2 p.m. in the afternoon <clears throat> and here's their website. So there's plenty of ways that you can uh, get good Bible teaching and won't cost you anything and you can call in and compare it with the Bible, question us, comment, or whatever. But tonight I want to ask, would you warn someone of impending danger? Now, I'm the, from what I'm hearing the so-called religious world today, you know, you're not supposed to tell anybody they're wrong. No judging, you know, just Jesus was love, love, love. He never told anybody, you know, what they were doing was wrong. Well, I, I wonder, I have to ask, why, did, why was he crucified? Why did they kill him? If all he preached was love, 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 well, I would say that he, he, he did love by pointing out their error and the direction they were heading, and that is love. It may not be, you know, it's like a medicine. It don't taste very good when you first hear it, but it's good for you. For instance, if you saw someone about to step into the path 
of a snake such as this one. Now this is a snake, this is a, a copperhead that I took a picture of. I was headed over to Eden one day on Berry Hill Road and this is a copperhead that I crossed my path and I took a picture of. But if you saw someone uh, getting ready to step into the path of this snake and this snake will kill you if, if you're bitten by it, he's poisonous, but would you warn him? Would you, would you get their attention and say you're, you're going the wrong direction? You're, you're about to get you know, struck by a deadly snake. I would most definitely, I would warn my worst enemy. I, I, don't, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to be bitten by this deadly snake, knowing that he could lose his life. But tonight there's another serpent that I want to warn you about. Notice in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, of course, we, are, we know this is Adam and Eve, the first couple, the first uh, creation. God created Adam from the dust of the ground, created Eve from a, a rib taken from his side. And he, this is the only stipulation he gave them. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now notice in chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And notice, the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Matt, if we could drop the, the lower third for just until we call for the phone lines, it would be okay. Uh, so the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. God said they would. The serpent said, no, you won't. Now, there are a lot of serpents out there today who are leading people away from the truth, and it's our job to warn them. Notice what the prophet Ezekiel says. In Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning in verse 1, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So in other words, if he was warned and he didn't heed the warning and he loses his life, then he's, he's responsible for his own blood. He, he was warned. So the watchman would not be responsible for his blood, wouldn't be on his hands if he warned the people. Notice, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Verse 6, But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Now we have some uh, who claim to be preachers that don't think it's necessary to warn anyone. 
I want to play a little bit of this clip here. And uh, if you all was watching Micah last night, you probably saw this. We, we're not really that. You can't. You Might can't need to bump the sound up a little bit, man. Absolutely. I don't, I don't, I don't absolutely. Really, how about belief in that? I don't really necessarily believe That's in. That's right. You know, okay. you know, pressing my views on someone who just chooses not to receive. I agree with that. I, I mean, want I, people to believe. But aren't you not doing your job if you don't like? I'm doing my job. He's got to preach to you. I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job by being who I am and based on what I believe coming through me. But don't so you think Johnny the fact and that them, he said that my husband's nice, I'm nice. That's doing my job. Okay, but we, don't we you know. think Johnny and them believe that it's their job to save you from hell and they're preaching all the time and if they see you doing something off, they've got to tell you, don't you feel like they're committed? They don't believe like you do. Johnny Robertson, James Oldfield, Mark McMenus, and Micah and Caleb, Definitely they believe, believe they've the got same. to convert you. Mm. They've got to save you from hell. And if they don't, they're not doing their job. That's the yeah. way they feel. Okay. I don't know how they feel. I mean, I, I know exactly how I feel because I study, I mean, you, you I study I mean? them I all the time. I mean, you I, don't I watch their shows. No, I don't. No, I don't. No. Well, so how can you know how they feel? I, mean, I know no, how they no, feel. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I said I don't know how they feel, but, they feel. but I, I can speak for myself. It's just interesting say, you know? to me. Hmm. I think uh, I think people know who I am and what I believe just based on my right. lifestyle. I think they did it two hours on Larry the other week. Did yeah, they? Just about yeah. the whole thing. But see, to me, it's like that's a waste of time it's because there's like a million a other people things to talk about. It's a waste of time. You hurt my feet. I'm sorry. I think your wife is right. Now, Charles, for those of you who don't know, Larry Serber was an atheist. And we had uh, Brother Johnny and James, Brad Harrop, debated Larry over his position. Now, it's sad when, when so-called preachers won't come on and debate the truth. Now, we have debates in politics all the time. What would you think of a politician who said, I'm, I'm for such and such, I'm, I'm against abortion, or I'm against... Uh, same-sex marriage or whatever, but I, I'm not going to get up and, and tell anybody why I'm against it or I'm not going to debate anybody over the issues. I'm just going to say I'm, I'm against it and that's it. And, or, or I might not even say I'm against it because that's, you, just, you just vote for me because I'm a nice person. And that's basically what Jessica Robertson's saying. Uh, I'm, everybody knows I'm a nice person. I'm not gonna, she's not going to step on any toes or anything. Well, she, she, uh, uh, Larry Serber died. Uh, one evening after a discussion with, with Johnny uh, on the buzz, I believe it was, but he went out and was jogging and, and had a heart attack, and we, we tried our best. We warned him and tried our best to convince him. I mean, he, he was, he's an atheist that does not believe there is a God. Now, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God, uh, and, and a man is a fool that says there is no God. I mean, how can you look at a at the universe, this perfect timepiece that we're on, and not know that there is an intelligent creator behind it. I mean, we look at buildings around us, and we know, and matter of fact, the Bible says every building is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Uh... Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 4. So we can look at a material building and know, okay, there, there must have been a designer there to, to build that. It just didn't, you know, an earthquake just didn't happen and all the, the rubble just uh, collect there and turn into that building. No, uh, Big Bang causes chaos. It doesn't call, cause order. Uh, but uh, Jessica said it was a waste of time to to talk to people about the gospel. Uh, but yet she claims to be a, a preacher. Would you tell someone the truth about God's word? In Matthew chapter 18, and we're going to be going over several different uh, aspects. Matthew chapter 18 verse 1 through 4, says at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself 
as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus told these individuals, unless they are converted and become as little children, they would not enter the kingdom of heaven. He is affirming that little children are innocent and humble. They're ready to obey. They have no sin. The Bible affirms that God forms the spirit of man within him. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Now, what kind of God would he be if he formed a sinful spirit within man and then turns around and says, you need to repent because you sin? That would be a hypocritical God. And that kind of teaching is what causes people like Larry to be atheists because they, they see the hypocrisy of it. I don't want to serve a God. I wouldn't serve a God that created me sinful and then said, you need to repent for your sin. That's a hypocrite. And God cannot be a hypocrite. And he is not a hypocrite. Notice what the writer of Hebrews affirms. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? God create, created our spirit. And the Bible of, uh, also affirms that sin is a transgression of the law. 1 John chapter 3, and, uh, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. The Bible also affirms that children do not inherit sin. Ezekiel 18 and verse 20. Chapter 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Notice this news article that I saw online this week, or well, it was a couple of weeks ago now. But notice, it says, this is the headlines. It says, Memphis, two-year-old shoots four-year-old sister. Memphis, Tennessee, police say a two-year-old boy shot his four-year-old sister after the boy found a gun their mother's boyfriend had left under the couch. Now, consider this. Would we, as a society, charge this two-year-old boy with a crime? I mean, he probably thought the gun was a toy. He had no knowledge of the laws of firearms. Uh, he probably thought it was just another toy. Picked it up pulled the trigger and shot his, shot his sister. Now, he would not be held accountable. He had no knowledge of the laws of the firearms. But who would be accountable? Notice as the article goes on, the commercial appeal reports the injured child was taken to Lee Bon Hur Children's Hospital in stable condition after, after she was shot in the right foot on Saturday. According to the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, 25-year-old Chris Saunders uh, told deputies he had brought the gun into the house two weeks earlier. He said he hid it without telling his girlfriend. Uh, Sanders is charged with reckless endangerment and child neglect. He's free on $50,000 bond. So we recognize the person who is accountable is one who knows the difference between right and wrong. James chapter 4 and verse four, uh, 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Notice what the Lord stated about Israel's children in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 39. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in there, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. They had no knowledge between good and evil. They, this means they had no sin. Those who knew God's word and rebelled against it would not get to go into the promised land. But their children were innocent. They had no sin. They hadn't transgressed any law. But yet we have serpents today who want you to believe otherwise. They teach born in sin. Children inherited sin from Adam. Well, who did Adam get it from? Adam was created perfect. 
Now, if it is the case that because people sin, that means that they are born in sin, well, wouldn't that mean that Adam was created sinful because he sinned? No. God created man in his image with uh, free moral agency. We have uh, ability to choose right from wrong. And when Adam chose to disobey God, he disobeyed God's law, he sinned the same way that we do. When we have a knowledge of right and wrong and we choose to do wrong, we sin. But we're not born in sin. Children are innocent until they come into a knowledge of the truth. But notice what some are promoting today. Now, this is Doug Barber at the Westover Baptist Church. Covetousness. By the way, it's committed every Sunday here in our nursery. You say, what are they saying to each other? They're saying to each other, it's, yeah, it's mine. It's mine. Now, he, I'm sorry about the picture here. This was on a not too good of a program that I was watching, but uh, the picture wasn't too good, but uh, it's the best I could do. But he's talking about these children that are in the nursery. Innocent children that do not know the difference between right and wrong, and he makes it up in his mind because they're playing or, or tugging one another with a toy that he's saying, it's mine, it's mine. No, he could be saying, here, I want you to have it. But Doug Barber's going to make it up in his mind because he has already preconceived in his mind that we inherited sin from Adam. Children are born in sin. So he's going to go so far as to call your children sinful. They are committing covetousness back there in the nursery. No, they are not, friend. They are innocent. Jesus said they are innocent, and we need to become like them, humble, ready to obey. But notice. I, I mean, we see it back in the nursery all the time. You see, coveting is a natural desire, and, and natural desires are normal and good. God made us with, with natural desires. Praise God he did. I'm glad we're not just robots, you know. But he has given us natural desires, but with our sin nature, they're sometimes corrupted. With our sin nature, they're sometimes corrupted. With our sin nature, they're sometimes corrupted. With our sin nature, with our sin nature, with our sin nature, with our sin nature, they're sometimes corrupted. Now again, we have this platform. We would offer Doug Barber free airtime if he could come on and present to us from the, from the Bible where children are born with a sin nature where children are born with inherited sin from Adam. Now, it's just not there. And if he would, you know, like to straighten me out, he could come on this program. I would give him ample enough time to present the scriptures that he believes teaches that children are born in sin. And then I would come behind him and whatever time it takes, you know, 15, 20 minute speeches and present the the. Bible, what the Bible says on it, which I have already tonight, Jesus said they're innocent and we need to be converted and become as little children. Was Jesus saying we need to be converted and become as those little sinners? No. He was saying those children are innocent. And most so-called denominations teach this. I've heard it all my life throughout the denominational realm. I've been through the Baptist church, Methodist church, Pentecostal holiness. Most all of them teach that children are born in sin or inherited sin. But notice again what Ezekiel told them through the, the prophet Ezekiel. What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. And today the serpent creeps back in, and he says, Children are born in sin. We all inherited sin from Adam. And people flock to him like flies. But they're not, they're not teaching the truth. And so we have to warn people. We don't want you to follow a lie. We have to warn you of this serpent. 
that's teaching the lies. And some people won't won't warn you. They they know it's their own easy street. They got the money coming in. We, you know, if we can keep them out of the Bible, just keep them coming, and uh, we'll t- you know preach a feel good sermon, and and make them think that they were born in sin. There's nothing they did to to uh, get sin. They inherited from Adam. And then there's nothing you can do to, to get rid of it. The Holy Spirit has to work on you in some direct way. You can't obey God's plan of salvation. Simply just hear the word, repent, confess, and be baptized to have your sins washed away by the blood of Christ in being buried with him in his death, like the Bible says. No, the Holy Spirit has to work on you directly. And then if he don't, then it's, whose fault is that? Well, it would be God's fault. If the Holy Spirit had to work on you directly to get you to do something uh, to be saved and then they say once you are saved you can never lose your salvation once saved always saved no, now let's don't go to the Bible let's don't you know let's just sing a good song get the bands cranked up the praise band and have a drama club and go to the movies and now they're having church in movies they're having church in bars they're having church everywhere so called having church but they're not reading their Bibles they're not teaching the Bible they're not teaching the doctrine of Christ and they want to keep you out of it. They don't certainly don't want us to warn you because they're afraid you might, you know, actually learn the truth. And that's the way the devil works. He don't want you to learn the truth because he wants you to spend eternity in hell, in torment. Something else he says. Now, now uh, the scripture, Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Okay, that's, that's a warning. Mark them. Point them out. And that's what we're doing. We are marking them. If I knew of a restaurant in town that was selling uh, spoiled meat, bad food, and I didn't tell you, you know, which restaurant it is, I just said, well, you, you just go on to that restaurant and, uh, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but they're they're selling bad meat and it'd probably give you food poisoning. I wouldn't be much of a friend. But friends, the Bible says we are to mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. How many times today do we hear someone say doctrine doesn't matter? Paul warns the Galatians in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. He says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which have pre- we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Also, 2 John 9-11, through 11, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Now a lot of people today, they, they'll say, oh yeah, we, my preacher preaches right out of the Bible. And they're in a church that they can't find in the Bible. If he's preaching right out of the Bible, if the doctrine he's teaching comes right out of the Bible, where's the church that he's in? Where's the church that he's promoting? Where's the Baptist church in the Bible? Where's the Methodist church, the Roman Catholic church? Where's the Presbyterian church, Pentecostal Holiness church, Seventh-day Adventist church? All these different kinds of churches. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4.17, notice. For this cause have I sent to you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, 
as I teach everywhere in every church. Paul taught the same doctrine in every church he went into. He didn't teach Baptist doctrine one week and then Methodist doctrine one week and then Presbyterian doctrine the next week and then Seventh-day Adventist doctrine one week and then Mormon doctrine one week and then Jehovah Witness doctrine another week. No, he taught the doctrine of Christ and Christ only. 1 Corinthians 1.10 It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Denominations are division. They all teach different doctrines. And yet they say, well, doctrine doesn't matter. Well, the Bible says, if you have not this doctrine, you have not God. Now, where is your Baptist church in this doctrine or the plan of salvation that they teach? Just uh, bow your head and say the sinner's prayer and accept Jesus into your heart to be your personal Savior. It's not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. And again, we we'll, we'll invite uh, Doug Barber, Jonathan Falwell, any Baptist preacher in the area to come on this program and show us where the Bible says all you have to do is believe to be saved. Now I know it, it takes faith. But it's not faith only. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6 Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 6. So yes, it takes faith. But friends, this does not say faith only. Without faith only, it is impossible to please Him. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God, look, must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You got to have faith, yes, but you also must diligently seek him. And the Bible says that repentance is a requirement. Acts chapter 17 verse 30, Paul said the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So we know that it's not faith only. It cannot be faith only if you say a person must repent. Now you have faith and repentance. Jesus also said in Matthew 10, 32, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So now you have faith, repentance, and confession. And it's confessing Christ, that he is the Son of God, that you believe that he raised the third day. It's not confessing your sins. No one has a privilege to confess their sins before God until they're in a relationship with God. The children of Israel were told to confess their sins, pray toward Jerusalem and confess their sins. But until you're in a relationship with God, you really don't have a privilege to Pray to God. John 9, 31, the Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Now if God hears not sinners, why are these Baptist preachers, these so-called denominational preachers, telling you to say a sinner's prayer and accept Jesus into your heart? Well, God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. 1 Peter 3 21, uh, 1 Peter 3, 12, rather, says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them to do evil. First, you must humble yourselves 
as these little children, like Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 18, and obey the gospel. And then you will be in a right relationship to have God hear your prayers. And Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 16, so now we have to have faith. Faith, repentance, confession. And Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So baptism is actually the point at where your sins are washed away. Peter told those on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, they asked after they were pricked in their heart, they realized they had killed their Savior. When they heard this, Peter just explaining to them that this was the Messiah that you all had just killed, crucified him. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So baptism is for the remission of sins. That's where you have your sins washed away by the blood of Christ. As Paul was told in Acts 22, chapter 22 and verse 16, he was told by a gospel preacher, Now why tarest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's the way you call on the name of the Lord. It's not just saying, Lord, Lord, come into my heart and save me, be my personal Savior. No, calling on the name of the Lord entails doing what the Lord said. Paul was not saved on the road to Damascus. He was told by Christ, go and find this gospel preacher, Ananias, and he will tell you what to do. And he told him to arise and be baptized to wash away thy sins. Not just saying, Lord, Lord. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Notice, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not uh, prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, the serpents are still out there, and we are trying to warn you all of them and trying to warn them. Some of them may be uh, sincere in their ignorance, and ignorance is not a, ignorant is not a bad word. I'm ignorant of a lot of things. And I was ignorant of God's word for a, for a very long time until James Oldfield straightened me out. <laughs> James will be joining me here in just a second. But notice, Second John 9-11, through 11, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son, if they're coming into you and bring not this doctrine, receive them not into your house, neither bid them God's speed. For he that bid them God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Notice what Paul told Timothy in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Friends, I suggest that's why this society, this today we're in as bad a shape as we're in because people are turned into fables and anything goes now. You can't judge for one thing. Uh, that's, that's the first thing that comes out of people's mouth when you talk about the Bible. Oh, you can't judge. You can't judge. You tell anybody uh, they're doing something contrary to the Word of God. Oh, you can't judge. The Bible does not imply or state that you cannot judge at all. Jesus said, sure enough, in Matthew 7, 1, judge not. But notice, it's not a period there. 
He says, judge not, comma, that ye be not judged, or in a manner in which you'll be judged. He's talking about hypocritical judgment. Notice from um, verse 2, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, to you again. Notice in verse 15. He says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now how, pray tell, are we to tell a false prophet if we can do no judging? He wasn't talking about absolutely no judging. He's talking about hypocritical judgment. In John chapter 7, verse 24, he says, Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. I can listen to someone teaching and judge according to God's word if they are teaching false doctrine or not. If a man is preaching a Baptist church or a Methodist church or a different plan of salvation, then I know by the word of God that he's a false preacher. He's a false teacher and we are to point him out. Now, there are a lot of serpents that are doing that exact thing today. I mean, they're, they're teaching false doctrine, but they don't, want, they don't want nobody to point them out. This is a clip that was on YouTube. And this is the first part of this clip is uh, is a um, literal clip, but now the, the end of it has been added on, but still I believe the, the end of it, the guy hits, hits the nail on the head. when we're happy. That's the thing that gives him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself because that's what makes God happy. Amen. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now, that was Bill Cosby. Now, somebody added that in, but I, as I said, I believe he hit the nail right on the head. That is the dumbest thing I've heard in my life. We're not worshiping God uh, to make him happy. We're just, we're just worshiping to make ourselves happy, and that is where the so-called religious world is today. Whatever makes you happy, and that's what they're calling worship. Um, friends, we're going to go to a break now. Uh, and then James Oldfield will join me here on the set. Uh, if you have anything to advertise the tent meeting, or? Uh, I'll get it when we get on. Uh, are you ready? Well, let me, I'll play this clip again. All right. So I just want to encourage every one of us to realize when we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. Because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. Because that's what makes God happy. Amen. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white regardless of what your nationality is, it's not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday.
Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life and he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we, therefore we will intermingle we'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life. And he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. What the? What the? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Welcome back. What does the Bible say? And, uh, welcome, James. Appreciate you joining me tonight. I know you want to advertise your upcoming tent meeting. I've already uh, advertised well, it a little bit and showed the we'll, map. Uh, we'll talk about that. We are have tent meetings going to be set. We're moving them down to Reedsville. And uh, we'll be in the regional area. So, uh, but let's let's don't break your train of thought. We'll we'll go on and uh, we'll get some tent. Well, I was moment. I was basically talking about the um, the things that is being said in the so-called religious world. And we just watched that clip of Victoria Osteen, right? And there's uh, Joel Osteen uh, standing right right beside her, uh, kind of <clears> reminded <throat> me of in the garden, Adam and Eve, <laughs> the man standing with her. 
ate of the fruit also. Right. And, you know, he didn't say anything. Didn't rebuke her. Yeah. And so, but she said, you know, just whatever makes you happy. That's the way God wants us to worship today. Whatever makes you happy. And that's not what the Bible said. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I believe, I, I firmly believe that that people have, uh, they, you know, the Bible talks about in Romans one, they worship the creation more than the creator, right? And they've made, they've actually made God into their own God. You know, they, that's basically what they've done. And uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, I, you know, I just, I want to follow Jesus, but then they tell Jesus where to go. Yeah. You know, so really, uh, it's like. Uh, one politician said, "You know, we're leading from behind. You know, they, they, they're they're saying they're following Jesus, but he's behind. And uh, so, really, they're not following. Him. You know, they're just they're they're driving him or dictating where he wants to go, which we know he's not really with them. But it really gets down to that's that's what we're talking about. People want to do what they want to do, and they're not going to be restrained to uh, 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 when it comes to how they want to worship." Uh, you know, Mark, that reminds me of in, in Acts 14. Can you put up Acts 14? And uh, I think about verse 27, maybe. Uh, Paul is coming into the uh, uh, the folks in, in Lystra, in, in Derby, the Galatia is basically mm -hmm. this area. Uh, no, let's see, Acts, uh, Acts 14, uh, back up a little bit. Maybe not be quite be that done that far. Uh, just go scroll up a few verses. Uh, yeah, come come on up. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. 